Welcome to today's show, The Inimines Worlds Beyond the Veil, Jeffrey Olsen Journey Beyond Death, Part 1 of 2. To this day, there have been several hundred million recorded near-death experiences, with the majority recounting consciously leaving their bodies. These incredible stories have profoundly revolutionized our understanding of death and its significance in life, both spiritually and scientifically. A near-death experience, by definition, encompasses a deeply psyching, conscious, semi-conscious, and spiritual encounter with approaching death or the process of dying due to life-threatening events. Yet words fail to fully convey the extraordinary nature of the light, love, and messages from beyond death that powerfully transform lives. Mr. Jeffrey Olsen is one of those individuals. Little did he know that when he poured his heart-wrenching story and near-death experiences into a book titled Knowing, Memoir of a Journey Beyond the Veil and Choosing Joy After Tragic Loss, it would become a number one international bestseller. His sole intention was to follow the will of the Creator and assist others on their journeys. During an interview with Supreme Master Television, he recounted the harrowing incident that led to his transformative story. It was on a fateful afternoon when his family was returning from a vacation in southern Utah, USA, and the car valiantly spiraled out of control. Unfortunately, uh, my wife, Spencer's mother, and my youngest son, Spencer's little brother, uh, passed away. They were killed instantly in the accident. I suppose the accident killed me as well. I, um, I had extensive injuries. Both legs were crushed. My left leg was amputated above the knee. My back was broken. My right arm was nearly pulled off. And then the seatbelt cut through me and ruptured all my insides. And my spirit left my body. Um, I literally was delivered and raised above the accident scene. And I was aware at the scene that both my wife and child had passed. And yet the first thing I was aware of was Spencer crying in the back seat, but I couldn't get to him. I was pinned. I could not move. I was losing consciousness. There was exquisite pain. And so it was the darkest moment that went from that to the lightest moment. In fact, I felt like light came and, and, being out of the body, suddenly I was delivered from the pain. But the physical aspect, even though I was out of the physical body, there was a spiritual knowing. Being outside his body, Mr. Olsen had a soul-to-soul -soul conversation with his wife, Tamara, in a bubble-like bowl of light. He was ready to leave for a higher world with Tamara, whom he loved deeply. But Tamara showed him why her departure was meaningful for the journey of his soul. Eventually, he made the choice to return for their son, Spencer. As I conversed with my wife, the communication was far greater than audible words. I could feel her heart. I could taste her tears. I, it was so intense. And near-death experience went far beyond just the conversation with my wife. As, as I found myself saying goodbye and, and making that choice. We have no idea how powerful our thoughts are. As I made the intention, I'm, I'm going back, I found myself moving about the hospital. Um, I, I, I was not aware that emergency services had arrived. I had to be extricated from the car. I was airlifted or life flighted to the nearest uh, trauma center because of my injuries. I didn't know any of that. I only knew that I had crashed the car. I had left my body. I had said this profound goodbye, and here I was wandering about the hospital as a, as a spirit. Mr. Olsen describes the profound love and oneness that he experienced when being out of the body. I wasn't in the body, but everyone I saw The doctors, the nurses, the patients, the families of the patients. It's almost like I had a 360 
physical awareness, even though I was not physical. I knew everything. Everyone I encountered, I knew their love. I knew their challenges. I knew their motivations. I knew their anger. I knew them as if, were, as if they were me. There was this profound oneness and connection. And it was coupled with an unconditional love. It didn't matter who they were or what they had done or what they hadn't done. I, I knew them in such a way that I loved them. I, I saw the magnificence of their soul. After the accident, Mr. Olsen spent five months in the hospital where he went through 18 surgeries and was ridden with deep guilt and grief. The process was unimaginable, which resulted in Mr. Olsen having another intense out-of-body experience. He was brought to a deep revelation of God's immense love, which he describes as a kind of return home in the psychological and spiritual sense. My spirit once again left my body. I was in another realm. And I was free of the amputation and the injuries. I had both legs. I could literally feel the energy from the ground beneath my feet. I could feel the intelligence in my calves and thighs as if I had a body. And I began running joyfully, being whole. The only word that comes close to what I was experiencing is I was home. I was home. It was so welcoming. And in this experience, I actually had the opportunity while being there in that other realm to encounter my youngest son my little boy who had passed in the accident. I swept him up. The weight and the heat of him was very real. I held him against me and he was solid. Um, I could feel him breathing. I could feel his breath on my neck. I, I even leaned over and I, um, I smelled his hair. The, the sensory of touch, taste, smell, sight, hearing, all of it, was accentuated in such a way that it was far beyond the physical. It's like that was reality, and, and this is the foggy, cloudy dream. Holding his youngest son in his arms in the other realm, Mr. Olsen came in contact with God's immense love in a way he had never known before. His preconception of a punishing God was transformed into a profound trust in God's love. I felt a profound presence coming up behind me. And um, it was so powerful and so cosmic and so wise and so overwhelming. And as I held my child and I felt this presence coming closer and closer, and I, I, I knew that's God, I began to weep. And I had the thought, I hope I can be forgiving. I, I feared God and I thought my little boy has passed because he died in the car accident. His life was cut short because I lost control and crashed the car. And, and in that thought, these divine arms reached out and just wrapped around me and my little boy. And I experienced unconditional love. There was this downpouring, this download of There is nothing to forgive. You are as precious to this universe as that child you hold. And it was multiplied because here I was holding my own son, who to me was perfect and divine and beloved. And yet I was being held in the arms of God, which I believed was judgmental. And yet what I experienced was there's nothing but unconditional love, that I had always been that, that I was a part of that. I had just experienced not being that in this realm we call mortality. Jeffrey's elder son, Spencer, who was only seven years old when he lost his mom and brother, is now a healthy, smart man with his own family. Having braved his way out of grief, he's determined as well that love is the only choice one can make. I think the important thing is, is no matter what you believe, If life is meaningless, it is still better to go forward courageously, um, extending one hand to another in faith, in, in trust, 
in love. Mr. Jeffrey and Spencer Olsen, we appreciate your selfless ideal of encouraging others to unconditionally serve humanity. May we all be awakened to a compassionate nature in God's immense grace. Vegan, it's you in the mirror, just more beautiful. Treasured viewers, thank you for being with us today. 